بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أحبت في الله continuing on in our study of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah يرحمه his treaties هذه دعوتنا وعقيدتنا this is our creed and this is our call where the Imam said نرى وجوب تعاون مع أي مسلم في الحق that we see that it is a necessity or an obligation to cooperate with any Muslim regarding the truth. This is the statement of Imam Muqbil. And we already discussed some of the uh, aspects that the Imam mentioned and the importance of cooperating on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some of the other things the Imam mentioned as far as what is preconditional or those things which will aid a Muslim in cooperating with his brothers and sisters in Islam. And of course we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem وَتَعَوْنَ لَبِرِ وَتَقْوَى وَلَا تَعَوْنَ لَإِثْمِ وَعُدْوَانِ That cooperate in piety and righteousness and do not cooperate on sinfulness and enmity, you know, and having hatred and spreading evil. And we already discussed that ta'awana la biri wa taqwa, that cooperating in righteousness, which is self-explanatory, and doing righteous deeds, and those things which are going to lead to a righteous ending. Al-wasail laha ahkam al-maqasid, as the ulama say, that the means to something has the takes the ruling of its purpose or its intended purpose. So for example, the person who is cooperating in Dawil Allah and they're using the means, <clears throat> they're using something that is mubah to get to this means, something that's permissible to cooperate based on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, if this is their end product, then whatever means they use to get there, that is Aslan Mubah, that, that in, in its uh, foundation, that it is something that is permissible, whether it's something rewarded or not. But for example, we're using the camera now or using the microphone, which in its essence is something that's mubah, it's permissible, it has no hukum tied to it. It's not haram, it is not something that, are, it's not wajib to use, it's not mustahab to use, it's not recommended, meaning that you'll get reward for using it, and that uh, if it's wajib, then you'll get reward for using it, and by leaving it, it is, uh, if it's something wajib, then you'll get a sin, sin for it. And if it's mustahab, meaning that it's recommended, that if you do it, you'll be rewarded for it. If you leave it, there's no sin on you. And then there are those things that are mubah, that are permissible to do in the shara, but there's no reward for using it. For eating an apple, for example. It's mubah. It's halal. But there's no emr in the shara to do it, and there's no emr or a nahi in the shara to leave it. There's no prohibition to leave it, and there's no command to do it. So likewise, if we use the microphone for the example, or the camera, and we're using the camera, if we say that the camera, although of course there's going to be ikhtilaf on the camera, but let's say the microphone, that if you're using the microphone, and you're, the microphone in its essence is mubah, it's permissible to use, and there's no reward for using it, and there's no sin for leaving it. But you're using the microphone to call to the Qur'an. And you're using the microphone to recite ayats of the Qur'an. And you're using the microphone to call to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And you're using the microphone to call to the 
understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah and how they understood Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul and their methodology in Minhaj and Dawah. Then therefore that microphone, by using that microphone, you receive the reward of what you were using it for. So if you use the microphone for that, that while you're using that microphone for that, for that great ghaya, that great uh, end product, that great end result, you'll receive reward throughout that whole means. Let's look at another clear example. You have an automobile, and you're using your automobile, Asana is Mubah. It's not an obligation to use it. It's not makru dislike to use it. It's not haram uh, to, to, to use it. But if you use it, to call people to Tawheed, to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then now, whenever you're in that car, going to do a lecture on Tawheed, going to call people to the worship of Allah alone, going to correct your brothers and sisters with regards to matters of Tawheed, then you'll be rewarded every time that tire spins. You're rewarded on your way to that. al wasail laha kamil maqasid the means has the reward of what it is intended for. Or right? it takes the same hukum, it takes the same ruling. Likewise, the one who uses that automobile to go to the club, so they're using it for haram. Going to the club is muharram. There's mixing, there's music for sure, there is uh, all kind of criminal activity, there's all kind of things going on in the club. So the person who gets in their car, their intention is to go to that club. They're using their automobile as a means to do that haram. Then getting in that automobile and all that is increasing their haram. And it is a step. It's a means to that haram. Al-wasail laha akam al-maqasid. The means takes the uh, ruling of that which it was intended for. So therefore, ahabatifillah, with regards to what we're talking about, ta'awun al bir wa taqwa, that cooperating in righteousness, that our cooperation we're talking about in the shara, we're talking about, that Imam Muqbil was talking about, rahmatullahi is cooperating on kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as is mentioned all throughout this book and in many of his books, he's not talking about with any Muslim that is practicing, that is uh, calling the hizbiya. So therefore, if someone, for example, they say, I want you to cooperate with us in this new Tao activity, but however, we're making our love and our hate to our group so that, that anyone who differs with us, we dislike them. Anybody who agrees with us, we love them. So now you've made al wala wal bara based upon your group, based upon your clique based upon your crew, what you're trying to achieve. So in this instance, as Imam Muqbil uh, is stated in many of his books, and is mentioned here, that this would be madhmoon. We don't ta'awun with that. That's not ta'awun ala bira wa taqwa. That's ta'awun ala ithmi wa adwan. That's cooperating in sinfulness and enmity. Why? Because when you, you have a click, for example, look, look at ISIS. And, and those groups, they basically have to make takfir of those people who disagree with them. If you don't make the bayah to Abu Bakr Baghdadi, if you don't follow him, and you're not down with us, then you're not a Muslim. You're not a legitimate Muslim. And we'll fight you and we'll have your head. That means they love those people who are with their group. And they hate everyone who disagrees with their group even if it's something uh, in certain issues or what have you. They're al well, uh, they're, they're al wala wal bara is based upon their groups. So you could not, therefore, have ta'awun with that. That would be ta'awun ala ithmi wal run. That'd be ta'awun in sinfulness and enmity. That's a classic example. Because they hate those who oppose them. And they receive sin for their ta'awun and cooperating in sinfulness, in slaughtering and killing mankind. 
So Ahlul Sunnah cannot cooperate with that. So then our cooperation is with the HUD of the Sharm. Our cooperation is based on Kitab al Sunnah. So that's why you couldn't, for example, a grave worshiper, they invite you to the masjid to give a talk. The, the ulama, of course, have ikhtilaf uh, regarding this issue. But say if they invite you to give a talk, and they're inviting you to, to compromise those principles in da'wah, to compromise uh, calling about tawheed, brother, please don't, you can come, we want you to speak, but don't talk about tawheed. Don't talk about uh, anything that brings about differences. Or you can talk about Tawheed, but don't talk about Uluhiyah, don't talk about worshiping Allah alone, but just make it general so that we all feel good, and that, that's our cooperation. That would be impermissible. Or the Qa'idah that Akhwana Muslimin, Akhwana Muslimin has, which is to cooperate in those affairs in which we agree with, and we excuse one another in those things which we disagree with. So no, you that that is also impermissible because that opens the door for everything, every kind of bid'ah. Meaning, okay, everything in the Shia that the Shia hold is it in opposite to the Kitab or Sunnah? Of course not. Some Shia believe in the Quran. Some Shia have, uh, you know, there's agreements about things about praying. Maybe not how we pray, but praying. Some Shia pray five times a day, but they don't pray in congregation, and they do this. So if we said, okay, Shi'i brother, let us now cooperate together, and we will cooperate in calling all the people to the prayer, and we'll have a lecture together, and we'll cooperate and show the Muslims that we're one hand. And we'll excuse each other. I know you Sunni, you love the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, and you're going to do this, and we curse the Sahaba. But let's just work together on this project for the greater good. So Ahl Sunnah would say no, because this isn't cooperating in bitter with taqwa. And this is following the methodology, the method of the Khwana Muslimin, which is compromising the principles of the deen in order to come together instead of having the people conform to the religion of Islam. So cooperation should base, be based upon Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al Ummah. And we'll stop there and then we'll continue on this aspect, this uh, important subject of cooperation that Imam Mukbil Rahmatullah detailed. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.